Well, good afternoon, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. The severe weather threat continues to increase for Sunday, and uh, really it looks like uh, this will be an afternoon uh, event getting out of here before early evening. So I suppose one good thing is we could see anything that rolls through uh, rather than being overnight. But whenever you have these events during the daytime, that does increase the severity of them uh, sometimes. So uh, let's go through the latest data and just sort of bring you up to speed. SPC, the Storm Prediction Center, has issued a moderate risk for severe weather over our entire area tomorrow. And that, you can see, is this big uh, red area that encompasses the entire state of Indiana and much of Ohio. Slight risks extend beyond that, and we will talk about timing and what to expect from that. Uh, here very shortly but let me just take you into the storm prediction centers website and let me just show you the probabilistic uh, what they have essentially given us a moderate risk is a 45 percent risk for severe weather and what this is is for damaging straight line winds so they believe that the, that would be the main threat here they do not issue tornado probabilities yet until the day one outlook so at the day one outlook tomorrow we'll get more along in their lines of thinking on that but certainly the tornado risk is increasing now you also notice the uh, black hatch here and the black hatch here is just an ind indicative of they believe uh, there could be a very significant severe weather potentially even a severe weather outbreak anywhere in that black hatch and you can see that pretty much covers most of the entire state of Kentucky as well as Indiana and Ohio so in short sweet and to the point here is the storm prediction center believes that we could have a very significant event come out of this and I agree with them um, if we were to go through the the parameters on the models again like we have done in some of the previous discussions uh, you would see that it's actually increasing and uh, we won't necessarily do that this time because I have some other things to show you but just know uh, it's not that they have been lessening they've actually strengthened over what they have so and that gives us greater confidence that we've got some uh, potentially some very rough weather to deal with one of the things that's increasing my confidence is the cloud cover that we're expecting tomorrow I want to show you this this is the high resolution NAMS uh, simulated or forecast satellite for tomorrow so what we're looking at here is a forecast cloud cover you see the colors this is a forecast infrared satellite so the colors on it the brighter the color the higher the cloud tops the colder the cloud tops uh, the 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 higher the clouds go up is the way to look at this so let me just sort of put this into motion here and we go through Saturday night here's we're going into the overnight hours on Sunday morning and we could see some rain overnight in fact we probably will and then you notice here we are at 8 a.m. but we're starting to move these clouds out and so by 10 o'clock here we go to 11 12 we're looking at uh, really partly cloudy and maybe even mostly sunny skies over part of the region from the way this is playing out. Now, that's different than some of my previous forecasts. In my previous forecasts, I've had sort of a sun and clouds mix. I still think that sun and clouds mix will verify, but it, it may be that we lean more on the sun side of things than the clouds during the afternoon. If that happens, then our tornado risk will go up significantly. Um, and we'll, we'll, I'll show you why here in a second. But in, in a nutshell, uh, any amount of sun that we see in the afternoon is just going to seek to destabilize our atmosphere. And what you see is this, this particular model brings that. And uh, you can see the actual squall line here starting to develop over Illinois. And you see potentially some other uh, thunderstorms developing ahead of us in this line as well. And as I put it into motion, those go over us. But again, we, we see quite a bit of, of sunshine mixed with a little bit of clouds as well before this line rolls in and then it starts to clear out a little bit behind this line until the the lower clouds start to overtake us so with this added sunshine that the model wants to bring that certainly gives me the indication that we could have a potentially significant severe weather event for tomorrow so let me take us through some of the future uh, radars uh, I've got three of them that I want to show you they paint a little bit different picture in each one and uh, remember that a future radar this is just a model this doesn't mean this is what will happen but it's rather to be used as guidance to give us sort of trends and and where things could potentially set up so as I put this into motion, you notice here we are on Sunday night, overnight, here's 1 a.m., then 3 a.m., and you notice we start to get some rain move through our area, so we have a first batch of rain, but that first batch of rain, here you are by the time you're heading to church at 9 a.m., it's starting to move out of the area. By 10 o'clock, it's pretty much out of southwestern Indiana, and of course by 10 o'clock, you notice from the satellite 
uh, as well that we start to dry out a little bit and, and, and we start to see some pokes in the sunshine after that. Again, that'll destabilize the atmosphere and then we get a little bit of a break. Here we are at 1 o'clock. Things are starting to uh, have a, a shower or two here and there, but then notice how quickly things go. By 2 o'clock, you notice, boom, you potentially have supercells starting to develop over Indiana. And by supercells, what I mean is individual cells that pop up by themselves. They're not congealed into a solid line. You're also seeing that solid line start to form out in here. So this would be the beginnings of the squall line that I've been telling you so much about. Uh, but let me just highlight this in a different color here for you. These would be the supercells that I've been talking about. And these are those individual cells that pop up ahead of the line. These particular supercells could be the thing that would end up being the most dangerous out of all of them. While the line could be very dangerous, and I believe will, we got to watch very closely for these supercells. If they fire up in this type of an environment where we have so much energy and so much shear, uh, we've just got a potential for... Uh, for some uh, very significant damage to be produced by these super sales. So this is something that we're going to have to watch closely. And again, you all, if you've followed me long, you know that I don't like to hype things up if they don't need to be hyped up. But this is one of those situations where I believe that we are going to have a significant severe weather event tomorrow. So um, just, just prepare. And, um, you know, you, you can see... Watch how quickly these blow up as, as they start to move out, and and uh, this is this is not a good sign. And don't, um, as I say this also, don't um, just say, well, you know, my county wasn't included in that, so I'll be okay. Um, don't look so much at the placement on these. Just understand that this is developing supercells ahead of the line. Future radar models cannot predict the exact positioning of where it will rain and where these storms and squall lines were developed, it can give us general trends. And so what we know as a trend is that the models are indicating to us the supercells are possible ahead of a big main line that develops. And so uh, really the entire area is under the gun. So just bear that in mind as we go throughout this. So we put this into motion and here we are by 4 o'clock and you notice that line is starting to move through central Indiana, starting to slant a little bit more this direction and it's getting near the Wabash River. And uh, as you put this in, you quickly see how it moves through uh, our area, potentially even develops a second line down here in Kentucky that will eventually uh, congeal with this. And uh, by the time we reach uh, about 8 p.m., <coughs> oh, 7 p.m. here, you can see, excuse me, 7 p.m., that it's virtually all gone. Uh, from our area and uh, so this is going to be a very fast moving system and uh, um, that, that that is good for a number of reasons um, flooding I don't think would be a big concern with this because it's such a fast moving system but the downside is because this is such a fast moving system we could see a, a very significant wind damage event out of this and uh, those upper level jet stream what you'll have if we were to look at the jet stream is that the jet stream is essentially going like this right over us and you're talking wind speeds of 120 uh, knots plus which uh, would be a uh, knot is less than a mile per hour so maybe 130 140 miles an hour in places over us in the furthest reaches of the atmosphere and even in the low levels you've, you've got a significant wind speed so what you'll see tomorrow is you'll have a jet stream going over like this but we also have a low-level jet to contend with, and the low-level jet is going to be going more like this. And, and so you've got here at the, uh, 60 knot or more wind speed in the high levels of the atmosphere, in the low levels, excuse me, and you've got 120 knot wind speed in the high levels of the atmosphere, and notice they're coming from different directions. That's where you get the tornado productivity from because you've got a, a directional shear. It's a change in wind direction as you go through. And you've also got speed shear. It, it is a change in um, a change in speed as you go up. And so that is certainly conducive uh, to uh, potentially some tornado development. So let's look at a couple of other models to get an idea of this as well. Here's what the NMM, uh, we were looking at the 4-kilometer NAM, the high-resolution NAM. Now we'll take a look at, at the NMM, which is just another high-resolution 4-kilometer model. Here we come into the overnight hours on Sunday, and you notice storms start to blow up over us. I don't believe these would be severe. 
Could see some rumbles of thunder out of these, certainly, but heavier rain, a bigger threat there. Uh, not flooding rain, most likely. It'll move out pretty quickly, too. But again, we start to dry out here, and you notice we probably get some breaks in the sunshine. But then, here we come by. Here's 2 o'clock. We don't see a whole lot developing uh, ahead. This one, you start to see the line roll through probably by 4, 5, 6 o'clock somewhere around in there and then it's gone through. Now this particular model does not develop the supercells over us that uh, the uh, 4 kilometer NAM model did. So keep that in mind. Let's also take a look at the ARW model which is yet another one of our high resolution models. And as we put this into motion, again here we go. Overnight on Sunday you see that batch of storms move through us. And if I can get this to work Notice this one's more aggressive. By the time 1 o'clock comes around noon, here's 1 o'clock, it's starting to already develop individual cells over us. And so um, if we just zoom in on this a little bit, um, notice all the little individual cells it develops. And it's going to start to try to develop a line out here. But these individual cells, again, that's going to be the largest uh, concern that we will have with this batch and then as it rolls through you notice the line forms to our west and then rolls through so bottom line short sweet and to the point of this um, how confident am I that we will see some severe weather out of this well I'm very confident that we're going to see a squall line so come through I'm a little less confident that we'll see supercells but I certainly think that multiple radars are indicating that they are possible if we can get a decent amount of sunshine tomorrow afternoon uh, things could get extremely rough around here. So let's just go ahead and take a look at our risks. Tornado threat, I believe, is more of a medium. I have not put a high threat on us for this, but I do believe it's certainly a medium threat at this point. Uh, Dr. Greg Forbes with the Weather Channel, who I greatly respect, uh, has given this a Torcon of 6 out of 10. Basically, it's a tornado condition index that he's put together that says um, it, it just kind of gives you a probability. And a 6 out of 10 means there's basically a 60% shot of seeing a tornado strike anywhere within 50 points, 50 miles of, of you in, in where you are in Indiana there. So um, that, that's pretty high, but it's not as high as it has been. If you remember the March 2nd tornado outbreak that devastated Henryville, that was a Torcon of 10 out of 10. So we're not talking necessarily about an outbreak of that magnitude yet, uh, unless things radically change. But a Torcon of 6 is certainly something that we take um, that we take note of. And, um, you know, a, a Torcon of uh, 3 or 4 is all he's given for Kentucky. So we're certainly more under the risk here. And... Uh, uh, damaging winds, are, I still think, are the biggest threat of this, of uh, this, the squall line. In addition to the potential tornado threat we may have through these supercells, even the squall line, we may have some tornado threat come through with the squall line as well with some brief spin-ups, although the supercells would give us the greater risk for long tracked and, and, and stronger tornadoes. But that, that the uh, squall line would be the damaging straight line wind threat that we would have out of this. And I, I, do, I would say that we could see some 70 mile per hour uh, severe thunderstorm warnings come out for this. Uh, more than that, maybe 80 or 90 per hour. I think those would be more isolated. I won't rule them out, but I think uh, up to 70 miles an hour is certainly uh, possible with the setup that we're under. Hail, I've given this a medium threat. That could be downgraded to more of a low threat. I go back and forth on that. I don't think hail is going to be the biggest threat. And of course, flooding is not overly a concern with this due to the fast moving uh, nature of this system. So certainly keep it right here we'll have the latest for you if you go to southernindianaweather.com you can click on the seven day forecast folks it's going to be warm tomorrow i'm forecasting continuing to forecast i have 71 tomorrow and i do uh, I, I, I really need to update this to gust to 40 miles per hour and by the way we are under a wind advisory area wide now the national weather service has uh, issued. If you just go to their page, you can see wind advisory area wide for us now. So, and um, if you read the text of their wind advisory, they are essentially saying that gusts up to 40 miles per hour are expected with this storm. So I'll update my forecast accordingly on that. Um, and even if we don't, well, I do believe that we're going to see some severe weather out of this. But even if your particular county never gets lucky enough or unlucky enough to be severe thunderstorm warned, depend on how you want to favor that. 40 mile per hour wind gusts are, are nothing to take lightly and that can knock some weak trees down and some tree limbs so take this seriously any warning that gets issued just 
take this seriously, folks. This is a very uh, dangerous situation. I'll be here tracking tomorrow afternoon. I'll have the latest on this. More updates to come as the models come in. For Southern Indiana Weather, I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Keep it tuned right here and stay safe, folks. Have a great night.